welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got something fairly ridiculous for you by the looks of things. Uh, this puzzle's been sent to me this morning by the testers. Um, yeah, it's called Blank Slate. I understand the title. That's, that's for fairly obvious reasons. It's by James Sinclair. And literally, these arrows... Um, you just have to make sure their totals, the, well, the totals in each direction are the same. And that's all the rules. And apparently that will yield a unique solution. And also, apparently, this is a very approachable puzzle compared to some of the monstrosities we do day to day on the channel. Um, and it's got one of the highest ratings for a simpler puzzle uh, on Logic Masters Germany that you, you'll find anywhere. I think it's 92% approval rating so it ought to be a lot of fun even though uh, I think anybody should be able to do this even if you've not ever tried a variant Sudoku before so we should have fun today I hope um, I don't have many things to tell you the, the thing I do have to tell you though is a rather special birthday message for Brian and Matt Karcher uh, who are uh, I believe identical twins uh, and Matt's wife Megan let me know that, that you guys might like a shout out on the channel, which we're very happy to do. I think you found us during the pandemic and you've um, you've been enjoying the content ever since. So I hope you both have an absolutely superb day today. I hope you've had cake, of course, and, um, and that you enjoy this video. Uh, other than that, no other news. So why don't we just get straight in with or straight on with James's puzzle. The rules are as follows. So normal Sudoku rules apply. For each pair of arrows outside the grid, the digits along the two indicated diagonals have equal sums. So what that's telling us, I think, is that those digits there have to add up to the same as those digits there. Uh, it says digits can repeat along these diagonals if allowed by other rules. So what we could do, for example, is have, I don't know, in fact, you could have loads of ones along this diagonal. You could have three ones. Let's actually try and see if we can come up with a real example. So now these, you can see the blue cells would add up to 10. So we just need to make sure these cells add up to 10. And we could do that like that. And that I think would be a legitimate way of filling in the orange and the blue lines. So there are the rules. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And that will take you to a link that looks exactly like this one. And you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. Um, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I guess we want to look at either a very long or a very short diagonal or perhaps both. So perhaps this one looks interesting. Because here we've got a situation where this cell has got to add up to the same as those cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells along that diagonal. So, well, this obviously can't be greater than nine. And in fact, right, okay, so I found the start. So th let's have a look at the orange cells and minimize them as much as we can. Now, if you look carefully, I think we can put ones into all of those and then one, two pairs into these. And that's going to sum up to nine. And there is no way we could make this sum up to any less than nine. And there's no way we could make this sum up to any more than nine. So we have reached equilibrium and we can actually start the puzzle. Um, and now maybe this one. So those two cells, let's, let's carry on coloring. These two green cells add up to the same as those six I could use the same colors actually. That's the, why, not, why don't I do that? I'll just change this to orange and then we can just have colors, um, two colors for the same totals. So, okay, right. So we can do a little bit of maths here maybe. So what's the minimum I can put onto three cells of a diagonal if they're in the same box? Well, I could have a one, two, three triple. So. These could add up to 6, and these could add up to 6. That's 12. That means these two cells have to add up to at least 12 and without using a 9. Um, but that actually gives us a lot of options. Even with, well, with 8 plus 7, we'd have 15. So we need a number between 12 and 15 into that diagonal. And that, unfortunately, I think me... Oh, can we, can we conclude there's got to be ones on this diagonal 
well yeah there's got to be at least one one that's for sure if there were no ones on this diagonal then the minimum we could have would be two three four two three four which would be two lots of nine which is 18 which is too high but do we have to have ones in both boxes ah <laughs> rather annoyingly no we don't because if we had say one let's just do an example if we did one two three there that would be six and then we could do two three four there that would be nine so this is now adding up to 15 and that is possible with an eight seven pair in the green ones so actually i think we are probably not meant to look here next let's see what else we can see this one is looking completely empty i don't like the look of that it's two these are two um they're too even in length if you see what i mean there's no difference in the lengths here so there's an awful lot of latitude in terms of how we're going to fill those cells um this diagonal has got a one on it and okay so that's got a maximum size i suppose it depends a bit what we put in those cells actually those have to be at least 12. so we can't put absolutely masses into these three cells and what's this got to equate with one two three four five cells on this diagonal four. ah ah right okay but here's something interesting We've got a one two pair in box two already and a one two pair in box four already so those two cells there cannot possibly be less than a three four pair and neither can these and that means this diagonal even if we put a one there so that's the bare minimum for this diagonal and that would add up to 15. so these three cells have to add up to at least 15 which means these two cells have to add up to at least 14 so there must be an eight right there must be an eight in them and they're either eight six or eight seven but if they were eight seven these two couldn't add up to 12 so that's impossible that's beautiful okay so the, i think this has to be um eight six and let me just explain that again if this was eight seven the maximum those two could add up to would be 11 with a five six pair but we know that this diagonal must add up to at least 12. So I think we have to go eight, six in those and then, well, and then five, seven in those. And these are one, two, three, one, two, three diagonal. And is so it, this isn't, yeah, and this is minimized. So this is three, four, three, four, and that's a one. And that one fixes that as a one, two pair. And this is a one, two pair. So our orange diagonal is finished. Um, yeah and there must be a one in this string of digits it's got to go in the middle and there must be one in this string of digits so that's got to go in the middle yes this is this is fairly approachable but it's also very fun two where does two go in box three gosh i can even do sudoku in this so that's a three four pair the two is giving me a three. yeah this is going two three three four um okay i can't quite see what to do now Pro it's probably more sudoku is this is there a two or a three seeing those two cells i don't know that there is oh oh look i hadn't noticed this this diagonal which is the same same for, as the top has has this little arrow pointing there so that's got to be nine it's got to be the same as that one. Oh, we could orange that to sort of have consistent orangeness in the grid oh yeah and this right okay so we've got a mirror here as well this one is pointing at that which we know is a 15 diagonal so this must add up to at least well it must add up to 15 these two have to add up to 14 so they've got to be six eight so we've got six eight there six eight there but what's this telling us i've got i see i've got two arrows i've not used yet i've got this one and this one 
Uh, okay, we've got quite a lot of latitude there. Although those two cells couldn't be a one, two, or a three. So they're a minimum of four, five. So that's a minimum of 10, 14, 17 here. Ooh. Okay, that doesn't look too propitious to me. These have to add up to 17 or more. All right, let's try this one. Now this one's got quite a lot on it already. It's got seven there. Um, hmm. I'm sorry, I'm just pausing because I'm trying to work out whether I should be trying to minimize or maximize these digits. Oh, okay. In fact, let's try and minimize these because I'm noticing that's got a minimum of four and so is that because we've got the one, two, three triples. Now this cell actually sees a one, two, three, four quadruple. So that's got a minimum value of five and that's got a minimum value of two. So we've got eight plus seven is 15. And we've got seven plus, not nine, because nine's in the row, right, that's it. Okay, so this is also forced. So look at, look at this cell. It's got to be an eight, because, because we need to get to at least um, uh, 15 on this diagonal. And we can't get to more than 15 because the nine is not available to go in that cell. So that's got to be eight. This has got to be four. This has got to be four. That's got to be five. That's got to be two. That's got to be two and three now by Sudoku. Um, two has to go here by Sudoku. Two has to go here by Sudoku. How many ones have we got in the grid? I feel like we've got loads. Oh, we nearly have. Look, we've got four, four ones looking at box nine. So we can put one in the corner which doesn't get a song, but it's still worth doing. Four. Four is placed in box nine. Four is not placed in box seven though. And nine, nine is placed in box nine. These two nines pinched, pinched the box and forced nine into this cell. So nine's in one of those two cells. A lot of symmetry here as well. Nine's in one of these two cells. We need six, seven, and eight in this column here. I will pencil mark that in, six, seven, and eight. Um, right, and I need three, four, five, seven there. How do we finish this off now is the next question. The answer is, I don't know. Got a feeling it might be Sudoku though. Three is a little bit restricted. Fours. Or is it this is it this one again? Um possibly. What have we got now on on this diagonal? Has it improved or not? We've got one four. Now the minimum those could be would be five and six now because we've got one, two, three, four in the box. I'm not sure if that was the same as we had before or not. So we've got five and six there. So that's 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, I think is a minimum. So these have to add up to at least 19. Yeah. That's very easy to do. Oh, okay, so we are actually a bit stuck here. What do we have to do? I'm quite pleased I'm stuck though. There should be a little a little meat on the bone, shouldn't there? Two in the middle box might be doable. Yeah, there are four twos looking into this box. So I think that's the only place two can go. So how many twos have we got in the grid? All of them. How many threes? Not all of them. Can we improve on threes in one of three positions in the middle box? One of two positions only in box number seven. Oh, look, three can be placed though in box number nine. So that places three here, that places three here, that places four here. 
that places three here. Aha, so the threes were give, giving us more joy than I'd realized. Four goes here by Sudoku. Four goes, yes, four goes there. And now four can go there by Sudoku. Threes, we've got loads of them now. There are four threes looking at box, this box. So that's got to be three. And okay, how about fours? We've done all the fours. We've done all the threes. Oh, now, hang on a moment. Yeah, hang on a moment, because now haven't we got something going on with this diagonal? We've got 414, which is 9. Yeah, yeah, it's maxed. Yeah, this is lovely. Okay, so we've got 9 there, plus a minimum of a 5-6 pair, which means that we've now got 20 minimum on this diagonal, and those three cells have to sum to at least 20. But they can't sum up to more because we've got a three on them. So that must be an eight, nine pair and the nine must go in the middle. So now, well, now we know this is a five, six pair, which means that's a nine. And if that's a five, six pair, this is a seven, eight pair. That's a six at the bottom of the grid. Uh, oh, that scares me the six and the eight. Eight and seven go in here by Sudoku. Eight and six go in here by Sudoku. Seven and five go in there. Five and six go in. And I suspect now we might be on the finishing straight. Let's hope I'm not speaking too soon, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's giving up its secrets, isn't it? That's now a five. That should be a seven. Um, right, okay, so in this column, we need sixes and nines, and you can see that's going to work out nicely. Nine and six. And we've got to put eight in this box. We need fives and sevens, which somehow is not resolved. Okay, hopefully something will resolve that. Oh, I see what does it. Eight there, seven there. Oh no, it's still not resolved. Um, no, it's still not resolved. Right, let's do this box. Uh, six and seven. Yeah, okay, so the six goes there, the seven goes there, the seven goes here. Uh, this square here is a six by Sudoku, and those two squares have got to be a five, nine pair, not yet resolved. These two squares have got to be a six, seven pair, that is resolved. And those two squares have got to be an eight, nine pair, which is also resolved. So that does the top of the grid, places five here. That gets us the five and the seven, that puts a seven here. We need six, eight, and nine. So that's six, that's nine, and that's eight. And I think that is the puzzle solved. Very cute indeed, James. I enjoyed that. That was, that was, it was definitely easier than a lot of the puzzles that we faced recently. Um, but there's no bad thing when it's done elegantly. And I defy anybody to come up with a more dramatic opening grid position than that. Just a whole series of rather short stubby arrows po poking into the grid from outside. A very short rule set. So we didn't have to do sort of anti-night or um, non-consecutive or anything like that today. Just a very simple rules. And somehow James has worked out that that's all that's required to make a nice puzzle um, with a unique solution. So thanks to James. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.